I get fussed at when I don't turn it on. And I get fussed at enough without having to add to it on my own. But in Genesis chapter 41 this morning, Genesis chapter 41, I want to talk to you this morning. I'm going to read down through. I may even actually read most of the chapter. Uh, but um, I may read down through most of the chapter just to kind of give you an idea of what they were going through at the time. I believe several things about the Scripture. I believe that God wrote down the literal happenings of the Scripture. And I also believe that God used the literal happenings of the Scripture to teach us principles, to teach us about life. I was talking to the Sunday School this morning. about series is in Sunday School about Daniel and the three Hebrew children and Peter and, and all of that. And I, and I said, my goal is to make the Bible come alive. And so I asked him, what does the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace have to do with us? What does Daniel in the lion's den have to do with us? The same way this chapter this morning, what does the king's dream have to do with us? And I, I want to share a thought with you that I think I'm probably as or more guilty of than anybody I know. Um, I have no problems in this area and with the depression epidemic that goes on in our country. I think there's a lot more people that have problems in this area with the depression and discouragement that goes on in our marriages, with our divorce rate, with our job turnover, with our church people coming and going, coming and going, with our uh, kids. Uh, one day they're in love with their parents, the next day they hate their parents. And so I think it's a kind of a worldwide epidemic. It's what we're going to be talking about this morning. So be patient with me. It'll take me a while to get there. But I think when we get to the when we get to the dessert, you'll see how it can help you. So in Genesis 41 it says it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river, and behold, he came up out of the river seven well-favored kind and fat-fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind, so Pharaoh awoke. And he slept, and he dreamed the second time, and behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rake and good. And behold, seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprang up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seventh rank and full ears, and Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. It came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And the Pharaoh told them of his dream. But there was none that could interpret them upon to Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in to the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And when we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man, a Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. We told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams to each man according to the dream he did interpret. And it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself, and he changed his raiment, and came unto Pharaoh. Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. Then Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, this is, the, this is one of the parts you'll need to remember. It has absolutely nothing to do with the message, but it's something you can apply to your life. Then Pharaoh answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dreams, behold, I stood upon the brink of the river, and behold, they came up out of the river seven kind, fat-fleshed and well-favored, and they fed in the meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor and ill-favored and lean-fleshed, such as I have never seen in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind, and when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favored and at the beginning, so I awoke. 
So I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven ears withered and thin, blasted with the wind, sprang up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears, and I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it unto me. And Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kind are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years, and the dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty years blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. And behold, there came seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there arose after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason that famine following, for it shall be very grievous. Now I'm going to stop reading there and go ahead and get into the message. We have a story of how Joseph was once again used by God to preserve not only God's people, but the land of Egypt as well. God had sent Pharaoh a couple of dreams and let him know uh, that there's going to be seven years of good time and then there's going to be seven years of famine that comes upon the land. Pharaoh would have never known what was going to be going on in his land had a preacher not interpreted God to him. Uh, when you're reading the story of Philip down in the desert and the and Ethiopian was riding along and uh, I, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Ezekiel, I think it was Ezekiel. Which one was I don't remember. Anyway, one of them asked him, said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I unless somebody explains it to me? Over in the New Testament, it talks about how they believe in him and not heard, how they hear, except they have a preacher. God has appointed pastors and preachers and teachers, uh, evangelists, to expound on the Word of God, to, to give us what His sheep need. I'm not putting preachers on a pedestal because some real jerks out there, uh, and I'm not real far away from being one. But God has chosen by the foolishness of preaching that men get saved. And so this morning I'd like for you to, to just think about, my job is, is to get you to think. My job is to get you to study. And I'd like to suggest to you this morning that maybe the seven good years in Pharaoh's dream would be the good times that we experience in life. The seven years of famine, the seven skinny cows in in life. And you remember the last few verses we read, nobody remembered the seven good years. That's what I want to talk to you about this morning. Don't let your skinny cows eat up your fat ones. If, you, uh, if you're down in the woods and you get bitten by a poisonous snake, are you going to chase that poisonous snake down through the woods and tell him how disappointed you are with him and fuss at him and gripe at him and, and all of that kind of stuff? Or are you going to go get some help? Kirsten said he would. Yeah, okay. Uh, but, but what good? the only thing you're going to do by chasing the evil is kill yourself. And so many times we get all hung up. There's a multitude, there's a, there's a, a, a catastrophic event that's he, uh, hitting our world today, and that's just depression and discouragement. We get so hung up on the bad that we forget all about the good. And in my impression, we let our skinny cows eat up our fat ones. You know, we, we as, 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 as adults, we, we regret all of the things. We, we grow up and we... we belittle and bellyache about how sorry a job our parents did and how bad they were and how, how they never did anything right and they never fed us and they never clothed us and they never gave us a roof over our head and they never get, took us anywhere and we never got to go on vacation and all we had to eat was bread and water and we, we just whine all the time about all the bad that we went through but we never remember all of the good things that we had. And we never remember that one Christmas present that you'd always wanted, you finally got. Even though you had to work three jobs to give it to you. You never remember the roof didn't leak over your bed. You never remember the times that they took you back and forth to the doctor. You never remember the times that they sat by your bedside and put the cool rag on your fevered brow. You never remember all of those things. And we let our skinny cows eat up our fat cows. Same way in your marriages. We bellyache and gripe and complain 
each other and we get all hung up on all the bad things. If Rose and I, if, if I concentrated on the things that Rose and I are different at, we'd have been divorced 39 and a half years ago. I mean, I like to ride four-wheelers. She likes to sit by the campfire and read a book. I like to go fishing and hunting, and she likes to sit there and watch Cooking Network. You know, we, we're, we're just totally different from everything we like to do and, and if I concentrate on how different we are, she, she, she likes to take her clothes off. You know, you got you ladies, you jump all over me. And I take my clothes off and I put them on the dresser and I wear them again the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. And the next. She takes her clothes off for 15 minutes, throws them over the floor and gets some more. And, and it goes on like that. She'll change clothes 15 times a day. I change clothes 15 times a year. You know, <laughs> it's, I, I was raised where you had to go out and draw up the water, you know, not just turn on a faucet and waste the water. You want get it. But we get so bent up on, on letting our skinny cows eat up our fat ones. And the divorce rate, the discouragement rate, the depression rate, the job turnover, the church splits, the people in and out of church would all be a lot less if we learned to concentrate on the fat cows instead of letting our skinny cows eat up our fat ones. The Bible says there that nobody remembered the seven years of good. Joseph had been sent by God to prepare the way. God's given you those good times so you can make it through the bad times. There's going to be bad times. There's going to be days that you don't get along. There's going to be days that your knee hurts so bad that you don't feel like preaching. There's going to be people that come into your church that ought not to be there. There's going to be people that come into your job and you get paid the same thing you are for doing half the work you are. There's going to be days. But remember, God sent you to fat cows. You're going to chase snakes through the woods and die? Or are you going to go get some help? We need to get a checkup from the neck up. Because if you don't, we're going to revert to some stinking thinking. Greatest act of God in the New Testament was the Holy Spirit arriving in the upper room. We need to get permeated in our upper room. We need to let the Holy Spirit take over our upper room. The Bible says, by the doing of your mind, be transformed. Where your head goes, the rest of your body follows. You want, to, you want to know how, how, whether somebody's an idiot or not? Listen to them talk for a few minutes. See, that's why I just keep my mouth shut. It keeps everybody in question. They don't know whether I'm crazy or not. We, we, we focus. Go to, go, to, go to somebody. Go somewhere. Uh, how about 2 Timothy? Go somewhere, yeah, I know. Uh, I don't know. Somebody took 2 Timothy out of my Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 20. You don't have to go there. You can flip there in your app. Uh, those of you that run around with your apps on your phones and stuff, I heard somebody say this past week, get you a brick and mortar Bible. You know, Ain't no, ain't no problem with apps. i got several of them on my phone too. And they're great. But but I, I looked through Rose's Bible and she's got Randy. You know, She's got so-and-so written through here. You know, she's got she's got all kinds, and 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 I got little stars on verses in my Bible and stuff. You know, uh, and and, and it, just, it just helps. It just helps. So anyhow, uh, verse number twenty, Second Timothy chapter two, it says, "But in a great house, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and earth, some to honor, some to dishonor." Randy version. I don't care how good you got it, there's some stuff going to come your way. In a great house, in a great church, in a great job, in a great marriage, in whatever it is, there's, there's going to be, there's, there's, some, there's some gold and silver in there, and then there's some wood and stubble in there. I don't care how good your marriage is, there's some days in your marriage you don't want to feel married anymore. I don't care how great your husband is, as in the case of Rose, there's days when she wished I would cease to breathe. Maybe not that far, but... This, I don't care how great your job is. I don't care how great my church is. I have probably got one of the greatest churches on the face of the planet, but some days, i just like to burn it down with you in it. There's some days that I don't care how much you love your kids. You want to hold them in the commode till they cease to wiggle. There's some days... I don't care if you've got the world's greatest job. There's some days. That's what he says here. He says, but in a great house, there's not only days, or things of gold and silver, 
But there's some stuff on earth too. Some to honor, some to dishonor. There's some of the, some of the best days you're going to have in your life. Philippians four eight talks about finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue in any praise, think on these things. Don't let skinny cows eat up your felons. Yes, you're going to have bad days at work, but you're going to have some more good days at work. Yes, your car's going to break down once in a while, but look how many times it got you back and forth. Yes, your house has some creaks and what I got my upstairs bedroom window. You can look out without opening the window. It's got a big old crack under the window. It's rotted out and I can't afford to replace the window. But I got nine other windows that seal good. I got, you know, I got my knee needs to be replaced. It's hurting so bad this morning I can hardly stand it. But I've had 57 years of almost good years. I've been able to walk. I've been able to get around. I've been able to hunt. I've been able to climb. I've been able to fight. I've been able to play football. I've been able to do a lot of stuff. And I'm gonna sit around and whine because I gotta have my knee replaced. Don't let my skinny cows eat up my fat ones. You know. Can't see as good as he used to. I used to work with a guy whose name was Tucker Buchanan. We worked at Sears together, and we were working on washing machines and whatever. And he's always griping about it not being not not being light enough. He's always having a flashlight out, and the flashlight was never bright enough. I understand now what he's talking about. You know, I got spotlights when I work on stuff now. <laughs> get that get that airplane thing out, trying to you know that big beam that shines through the air so I can work on stuff. But we we got to get that check up from the neck up. We we we've got to. Get to where we concentrate on the fat cow. We can't forget the time of good in our lives. Even though you may be going through a time of famine right now. Even though our church you know, may be going through a time of famine right now. Even though your wallet may be going through a time of famine right now. Uh, we were talking to Rolf this morning. It seems like he said he'd keep going down the scale in wages instead of up. You know, But, but the thing about it is, is when you're up here on the scale of, of, of do good, you take care of yourself. When you get down here on the bottom of the scale, you know God's going to take care of you. you know, and I'd rather be taken care of by God than me anytime. Because I'll let you down. I've let me down. I told our kids this morning, I said, I love you guys. I said, I don't want you to have to go through the crap I went through to get where you are. In Daniel chapter 3, it talks about how the, the three Hebrew children went into the fiery furnace. I'll give you a little math lesson this morning. Three plus fire equals four. On the outside of the fire, the three Hebrew children. They didn't get to be with Jesus till they got in the fire. Don't let your skinny cows eat up your fat ones. We tend to forget the good times. We tend to forget how many times God has put food on the table. We tend to forget how many light bills God's paid. We tend to forget how many times the car's kept running. We tend to forget how many good years of marriage we've had. We tend to forget how many times the paycheck has come at the end of the week. We tend to forget how many times the preacher has delivered the message that really helped you through the day. We tend to forget the, the song that somebody wrote. Tiff sent, a, sent me a text this morning, I think. Have you ever heard of this group? Yeah, about 30 years ago. Where have you been all your life? They've been ministering to me forever. She's in playing songs this morning. I asked her, what are you doing in there playing old cat meeting songs this morning? You know? Make fun of that southern gospel preacher. <laughs> some of us, we some of us got the Jacob syndrome. You remember when Joseph got thrown into the to the pit and sold into slavery, and his brothers brought the bloody jacket back to him? If you read that account, it says, "And Jacob refused to be comforted." Some of you are miserable because you want to be. You let your skinny cows eat up your fat ones. You woe is me. Oh, he haul song. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. If it were for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. You know, Some of us, that's our theme song of life. We, we, we forget 
How good God has been to us. How many times God preserved you on the battlefield? How many times God preserved you going down the highway? How many times God put food on your table? How many old Indian men did God send to your way when you were laying face down in the mud with both broken legs? How many times God's protected you from the rattlesnakes out there on the cow farm? How many times God protected your airplane from flying over the ocean and dropping out and never being seen again? How many times you keep talking about you know this and that and the other thing, and we forget how many times come through for us? We forgot the seven years of good times. Well, I don't feel like I love him no more. She just don't meet my needs like she used to. Maybe your needs ain't never been met because you ain't met worthy. The Bible says when they were all in one accord in the upper room, then the arrival of the Holy Spirit came with the sound of a mighty rushing wind and filled the house where they were at. <clears throat> When's the last time we filled our house with nothing but God? When's the last time the thought of your day started off with, thank you Lord for another day. Some of us start off our day with good morning God. Some others start off with good God, it's morning. You know, it depends on how you look at it. We focus on the negative. <clears throat> Charles Dickens, anybody smart enough to read Charles Dickens? I never was, I watched a movie. <laughs> but in, in, in Charles Dickens, one of his writings, I think it was A Tale of Two Cities or something like that. He says, the best of times and the worst of times. And that's true. These are the best of times. And depending on how you look at it, these are the worst of times. The Bible says in the last day, perilous times are going to come. And that's all we think about. We let the skinny cows feed up on the fat ones. Oh, it's terrible. The church is going down. The church is getting worse and worse. My health is getting worse and worse. Every is better than it's ever been before our country is going to hell in a handbasket. we got nothing but idiots in the White House and yada, 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 yada. And it is the worst of times. And that's where we stop. But Joel chapter 2 and verse number 28 says, In the last days I'm going to pour out my Spirit. So yes, it is the worst of times, but it's also the best of times. It's the time, the age of grace that God chose His Holy Spirit to replace Him here on the face of this planet and to indwell every believer and to give us comfort in the middle of the night when Jesus is not around and to give us guidance and to give us direction and to explain the Scriptures to us and to give us a feeling that we ought to preach this because somebody needs it this morning. <clears throat> Jacob refused to be comforted. Refuse to be comforted. When you make a choice to be miserable. When nothing is ever good enough. I've preached sermons around this church and I know I'm not a very good preacher and I'm not very good at what I do. But I've preached sermons around this church that sometimes I feel like the Holy Spirit is actually here. I feel that this morning that the Holy Spirit is here this morning. But in when I preach one of those messages and I have 15 people come up to me after church or send me a text or something, Pastor, you really hit me home this morning. Pastor, you really nailed it to me this morning. Pastor, I really appreciate that word from God this morning. Pastor, I've just made it through this week because of what you preached last week. Pastor, 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 Pastor. And then you have those ones. That no matter what you preach or what you say or what you do, I could get up here and do cut flips backwards naked and it wouldn't be good enough for some people. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are just, we need to sanctify our brain. We need to get a checkup from the neck up. By half of you, suffer with depression. I kind of enjoy mine. <laughs> but but I, I I have this stinking thinking too. That's why this message hit home for me because so many times I let my scales eat up my fat ones. I can have 50 people out here sitting there like a dog with his tongue hanging out panting for the gospel as the deer panteth after the water. So my soul panteth after the deer. And I can have people sitting here hungry for the gospel and waiting for that next word from God. And then you have people sitting here like, man, is he going to shut up so I can go home? And guess who 
I'll concentrate on. The one who'd rather be on Facebook than to be in the house of God. Concentrate on the one that ain't here this morning instead of the 30 that are. To see my skinny cows get hungry. And I feel sorry for skinny cows apparently. Because I like to feed them. My skinny cows go to eating up my fat cows. And I don't think about how many thousands of people have come through this church and have been helped. I don't think about the group that came from Pennsylvania this past month and said they never felt the Spirit of God like they had anywhere else in the world as they did in this place. And I forget about the numbers of people that have been baptized in the old horse trough outside. I forget about the old Indians that have said, I've sat here for 67 years and nobody's ever told me about Jesus. How many veterans have sat on my front porch discouraged with the gospel? Been out of shape of all the skinny cows that they run into. And they sit here and they're beginning to realize how much Jesus loves them. And it don't matter if I ain't perfect. And it don't matter if I ain't got it all together. And it don't matter if I don't wear all the right clothes and say all the right words. Jesus loves me this I know. For the Bible tells me so. And I ain't going to let no skinny cow eat that up. The devil's fed you a pack of lies most of your life. Told you you ain't worth saving. you will never be good for anything. Some of you ought to write Charmin across your forehead because you feel like a piece of used toilet paper. Got news for you. God specializes in recycling. Yep, it is the best of times. Got more money in my pocket than I've ever had in my life. I'm cuter than I've been in most of my life. I finally got back to a Ford. After years of Chevrolets and Dodges, I got a wife to come November if I'm still alive. We've been married to for 40 years. I got some friends. Wrote me a note yesterday. Said North Carolina hasn't been the same for us since you left. Got a church over in Michigan when I got off the plane. He said, you know you're our first choice. But I let my skinny cows feast. See, I don't think about the fat cows roaming around my pasture. I don't think about some of the greatest people on the face of the planet sitting in here just to hear what I got to say. I don't think about all of the properties that we got here God has paid for and we got money in the bank. I don't think about all of the brocks that come in the door and say, I think I'll just stand outside. And then he came back again. I don't think about all of the people that their lives have changed and they're out ministering somewhere else that God has run through this place. I think about the one who doesn't come anymore. I think about the one who tells me, you're too loud. Or you're too quiet. One week you couldn't hear me, the next week I'm too loud. <clears throat> Man, I made these offering plates. One of my dear spins on the face of the planet. Love him to death. Don't have anything to do with God anymore. And I can concentrate on the skinny cows. Just like you can.
I know how guilty I am. How guilty are you? Because see, do you remember the story we read? The skinny cows came up and they ate up all the fat cows. Have you ever, ever seen a steak after you eat something? We all do spend all your time in the house. <laughs> Neighbor came over to the house the other day and says, Won't you No, I killed two big rattlesnakes over here the other day. I said, Were they good enough to eat? I don't care about rattlesnakes. You know what? You kill them. Fry them. Any, any, okay, let's see. I, I, y'all scared to death to be labeled, ain't you? Has any, I'll talk slow. Has anybody in here ever seen a snake after it's fed on something? You have. Okay. You notice that big bulge in him, right? Did you notice we, we had a, a big old huge black snake back east one time. And he got in a chicken nest and he had ate up all the eggs. And so I grabbed him by his tail and I just squeezed. Got all my eggs back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, waste it. Got my eggs back. Bible said God gives back everything the devil stole from us, right? You never fought a dog over a piece of chicken? <laughs> Set that thing up on the fence post, it'll dry out in a few minutes. Anyway, but after after a snake eats something, they don't you know, they don't chew it up like we do, they just kinda of swallow a hole and there's a big old bulge in their body. Did you notice what the scripture said about them skinny cows? He said, after they ate up all them fat cows, you couldn't even tell they had eaten anything. You ever felt like that? You blame and wine, and you're just as empty the next day. It's not fulfilling. It's not satisfying. It's like chasing the poisonous snake down through the woods because you're going to get even with that snake, but you're going to die trying. Same thing we do. Y'all don't do that, though, do you? It's just me, I know. Don't let your skinny cows Eat up your fat ones. Some of you were planning on going home this afternoon and griping about something. And now you don't heard this. I love your honesty. Kirsten said, mm, I sure was. See, and now you're going to go home. And you're going to start. And Robert's going to say, you remember what that preacher said? Chris is going to say, no. And Robert says, I don't either. <laughs> Robert says, I can tell you. <laughs> but how many of you like me would be honest enough to say sometimes I concentrate more on the negative than I do on the positive? Sometimes I let my skinny cows eat up my fat ones. Now, I've already apologized to God when he preached this message to me. But how many of you like me would say, I don't want to do that no more? And I tell you what, it's so easy to do. It's so easy to do. Because we get so comfortable in the good times. And we forget how good God has taken care of us. And then when the bad times come, man, they are real. You walk around for years and you play football and you lift weights and you run down through the woods chasing the hounds and you climb trees and you climb on roofs and you jump all and you don't realize until you got a piece of metal in there that says it's a knee. We were out, the kids were out shooting bows and arrows the other day and they lost one of the arrows. So we got out a little metal detector and we went out through the field looking for the arrow and I swung it by my knee and it went beep, 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 beep. Kids, that's cool, do that again. So I found my knee with the metal detector. Now I'm going to have a matching set. You know? And I remember that four months of excruciating, agonizing, hurtful pain that I didn't want to even live 
<laughs> and how you sit on your bike and you cry as you ride, just trying to get the pedal to go all the way around. And now that left one doesn't hurt. And I can walk. Granted, I walk beside it because the other one's harder now. But all those years of playing football and riding tricycles off the roof and jumping up and down and climbing tree stands and walking a log across the river and all of those times, I, I, I just, when I was sitting on that bike crying, I forgot all those good times. Because, see, we, 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 we let skinny cows eat up the fat ones. And we don't even remember the good times. Don't remember how many times... God has put food on the table when you didn't know where it was coming from. Don't remember all those times that God answered your prayer. Don't remember all those times that your wife or husband was nice to you. And probably in Robert's case, it's... (laughs) But we forget, don't we? We forget. That job some of you are going to go to in the morning and you're going to bellyache your whole way to it. But how many times on Friday do you appreciate it when they hand you that check? That baby you got running around in your belly. (laughs) Don't even remember that sickness with June. Because she's just so darn cute running around here now. You look at Emma, you don't even remember all those stressful days you wondered if she was going to make it. Because she's here. Don't let your skinny cows eat up your fat ones. It's easy to do. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much. For your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. 